None of this would be possible without Greg, without Ian, without Paul, and without the bald-headed wonder himself, Alan Jones. <laughs> ten fucking years. Friday Fest 10, nearly over. How are you feeling? Exhausted. Exhausted, exhilarated. It's been absolutely incredible. We've taken off and we're just soaring at the moment. Um, hopefully we won't crash land. Everything is so ramped up and on a bigger scale than even I actually had anticipated. It's the fifth day, so I'm a bit, you know, zombified myself. Nine o'clock in the morning, waiting for the zombie onslaught to happen. Hundreds of zombies turning up today as part of the charity Zombie Sports Day. It's like a big fancy dress party, but outside on Leicester Square. This year, hopefully, we're going to get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people bleeding into Leicester Square. We're here for the zombie walk before uh, zombie women from Satan and Colin. One of the things that happened a lot with, with Colin, you know, people would just come down and spend the day, you know, get covered in latex and makeup and fake blood and then just take to the streets of Tutu. So yeah, it, it, feels, uh, it feels like home. The kind of people that do the zombie walks are the kind of people that don't mind covering themselves up in ketchup and hacking apart some old clothes. She's been rotting a bit longer than me, so yeah. Yeah. back from the dead for one day only. I've been on the train since um, East Croydon Station. The amount of looks I've got is unbelievable. You just say, oh, you know, rough night out. Warren Speed and Steve O'Brien. And the film is quite mad, although I've seen some more mud films this weekend. They serve these weird stotty <laughs> things up in Newcastle and if his brains are a bit like a breakfast stotty, I'll eat Warren's. Could you ever dream you'd have a world premiere in Leicester Square in the Empire? Not for shit like that, though. <laughs> I think it's going to surprise one or two people. And it's good at the Fright Fest supports British made product. I'm having a good time. <laughs> American horror fans have become lowest common denominator and they really just want to see naked girls and people's heads getting cut off and there's nothing wrong with that but when that's all you want it gets a bit repetitive for my taste so I, I make very different types of movies than that. Thank you so much for coming out at you know, one in the afternoon. Maybe I should give a thank you to London for closing the bars on Sunday nights. Because um, that, that's what got me here. Satanism was huge in the 80s. Everyone really believed that there was these cults, you know, it was called satanic panic. The whole country was obsessed with it. Things like that and the obsession of people thinking this was happening was happening. This actual story of this girl happening? No, I made that up. I was here in 2005 with my film The Roost and I almost didn't come and they, they talked me into it the last minute and I uh, had the best time out of any festival I had ever been to and uh, so I was so happy to come back for this one. You can just look really excited for a photo. One, two, three. Oh, terrible. <laughs> Vlog tormented to us. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hopper's character, Marcus, had his eyeball popped out. Paul did a brilliant popped out eyeball on there, but being a prosthetic, it was quite static. So we actually got that eyeball to be able to move around. Decapitation, genitalia cut off. Um, we, well, like, we like a bit of that. We yeah. Love a, bit, we love a bit of a dick chop. <laughs> yeah. Madeline Smith, cover star. Somebody rang me up and said, you're going to be on the cover, Maddie. I'm delighted, thrilled, ecstatic to be here and very flattered to be on the cover of this book, Old Lady Like Me. And I screamed, what? Why, first of all? And then, oh, well, thank you very much. I was absolutely thrilled to be as I still am. My first project with Hammer, I trotted along for an interview with this lady and she said, yeah, you'll do. Would you like to be in Taste of the Blood of Dracula? And I said, yes, please. Do you remember the brothel scene? <laughs> realised that I was going to be in a bordello scene with uh, Geoffrey Keane riding on my back. <laughs> the last couple of films, Heartless and The Descent 2, is going to be a great finale to what's been a fantastic festival. Two world premieres of two hotly anticipated movies. Descent 2 later? Yes. I really enjoyed the first one, I thought it was amazing. Yeah. One of the, the few films in recent years that's really given me a proper scare, so I'm hoping for some more of the same today. Heartless is my favourite film of the year. I think Jim Sturgis gives an Oscar winning performance in it. Jim Sturgis is going to be performing three songs from the soundtrack before the screening. He's in there now, just sort of like doing the sound check. If people don't like our closing two films and everything we've got uh, uh, arranged from this night, th this evening, don't come back. For me, it's a kind of new genre of horror, hopefully. You know, it, I think it, it's using the language of horror films, but I think visually it's kind of pushing it into a much richer, kind of hyper-real kind of landscape. It's got so many layers, and it really does cross through all these sort of different genres. It's like not your conventional sort of guy talking to a fish for three hours, <laughs> you know, with two old women that are his mates coming down and talking about how they don't have boyfriends anymore. It's like, you know, it's a movie, and that's what I like. It's one of those films, it's like a great record, you know, you can watch it over and over again. It's both an emotional story as well as quite horrific at moments yeah. uh, and squeamishly funny too. I've written with Nick Beekart 10 songs for the film. Phil being Phil was like, right, I'm going to write the entire soundtrack as well. Usually you get directed by young directors who have more 
more ambition and ability and I think Philip is the other way around I don't think he has a great deal of ambition that's why he hasn't made a film in so many years but he has a fantastic ability when we left in a rap set of an evening I couldn't wait to get back couldn't wait to get back the next day and start to work. The world premiere of The Scent Part 2. John Harris, Shauna McDonald, Natalie Mendoza, oh! Christine Cummings, Gavin O'Hanlon, Anna Skellett and Michael J. Reynolds. Everybody be kind to John. He's not Neil Marshall, but he, he may even be better. You have to forgive me. I've, I've been locked up by myself in a room for 10 years. I'm not used to facing the public. <laughs> I've been shot, skewered, hung, bombed, but you know, getting chewed alive and dismembered at the same time, <laughs> I think it tops the list, I'm pretty sure it does. I think it's a, I can say I lived the American dream, I got to kill my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Were the crawlers still scary to you? A man covered in KY jelly is always pretty scary. <laughs> I can vouch for that. <laughs> I think it's what the festival needs every now and then is the roller coaster ride, the party film. The director said it was the best screening he'd ever had of the film. It looked and sounded amazing. My favourite's Millennium. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Millennium was also great. But the Nazi zombie film, that yeah. really, really good fun. La Horde, uh, the, uh, the French zombie flick, obviously. Um, that was fantastic. I thought Triangle was really, really good. Big surprise for the fans is actually the quality of the films in the Discovery screen. Every audience has been packed and they've all loved the, the films. Do another words to the song? I think we're alone now, which is actually quite frightening. It's not scary in the sense of some of the stuff you've seen next door, but it's scary. The fact that it's real actually makes it quite scary. I really love the fact they had a kind of retrospective screening. American Werewolf in London, which was such a highlight this year. Having an older film that Brilliant. everyone loved. John Land is suddenly springing on us that he's got this rare copy of the making of the documentary for Thriller. So you think, oh, and he says, well, I'll show that for you guys. Thank you to John Landis for just sticking around and being with all the fans. The Human Centipede, I think, exceeded our expectations. It was one of those like, ooh, what's this all about? And it's just, it's just the name alone. Yes, it was shocking, but it's actually recognised as a very well-made film. I interviewed the Fright Fest boys and I said, OK, guys, there's four of you. If you were a Human Centipede, what, what order would it be in? Of course, Alan Jones is like, I'm the head, darling, I'm, I'm the head. It's been like a five-day premiere every time two hours there's like more stars rolling in. It makes a lot of difference when the actors are here. Every single filmmaker that made the effort to come in, every producer, every star, we really really appreciate that as well. And one, one more quick bit of news, um, you may remember the lady running around with the Twins of Evil t-shirt and the big bump. Well the big bump is now Max and Zoe. They arrived this afternoon. When do you start planning Fright Fest 11? Wednesday. I don't even want to think about Fright Fest 11, but I think we're in very, very good shape to get even better films. Me and Ian are off to Toronto for a couple of weeks, a couple of days in LA, and then a couple of weeks at the Fantastic Fest in uh, Dallas. We always rise to the occasion. It'll be fabulous, as usual. We're also planning already October's event. We've got a few films for that, which I can't really say at the moment. I think we'll be getting a lot of really nice choice titles for next year. Right, that's it, off. Uh